Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Griffin Sports Insider. Presented by Mosaic Life Care. We liked being on location so much I last like week, Brett Easley. Yes. We decided to do it again. You can't tell from the backdrop, but we are at the High Ho Bar and Grill site this year of the Griffin Luncheons. It is. New site of the Griffin Luncheons, 1817 Frederick Avenue. And we're excited to be here. Great, great place to come have lunch, come have dinner and drinks, come watch your favorite sporting event. Uh, great back room. That's where we are. Nice, uh, quaint setting back here. Something on the menu for everybody. Great sandwiches. Uh, you can get a steak, salads, wraps, etc. Very convenient location. Come on down. We're here every Monday, noon to one, talking Griffin Athletics. No RSVP is required. Well, and we will be talking, one of those coaches, Coach Jerry Partridge talking about football. Last Thursday, maybe karma came to bite the Griffin football team a little bit in just their second loss in the last 13 tries against Central Missouri. Missouri Western in the land of the mules, literally, for a four straight week one showdown with Central Missouri. Griff's looking for their four straight win over a UCM team ranked number 20 in the D2.com poll. Early on, things going Missouri Western's way. 9.27 to go, first quarter. Skyler Windmiller lobs a pass up for D. Tolliver, who somehow pulls it down over a UCM defender for a 17-yard TD strike. Griff's up 7-zip. Griffin faithful, happy for now. But they'd see a lot of this. An 11-play drive ends in a 45-yard Billy Greco field goal to cut Western's lead to 7-3. But two drives later, Missouri Western threatening again at the UCM 23. Windmiller's pass to Trey Lewis bounces off his shoulder pads and into the waiting arms of Austin Miller, which would lead to another Greco field goal. Griffin defense did their part. Giannis Matula stops Garrett Fugate dead in his tracks here, but three first half field goals gave the Mules a 9-7 halftime lead, and Max is just beside himself. Hey. It was pretty hot. First drive of the fourth quarter and the Griffin offense starts to click again. When Miller hits Brandon Clark and stride for a 69 yard pass to the UCM one. The first play of the fourth quarter that would lead to a one yard Raphael Spencer TD run. Griff's up 14-9. The Mules would answer with Greco's fourth field goal of the game and now it's starting to look like your average everyday down to the wire Missouri Western Central Missouri game. Third play of the next drive, Windmiller hooks up with D. Tolliver for a 24-yard gain to the UCM 28, but Tolliver is shaken up on the play. He would not return with a shoulder injury after pulling down four catches for 84 yards and a score. The drive would eventually stall, but true freshman kicker Tanit Pettit is good from 25 yards out, and it's 18-17 Missouri Western with six to go. Remember, we said it would come down to the last minute. Kyle Eccles gets behind the Griffin defense for a 27-yard touchdown strike from Fugate. Two-point try is no good, and it's an 18-17 UCM lead with 3.45 to go. Missouri Western looking to answer from their own 30, and Windmiller overthrows his target, and it's picked off by Alex Lackey. UCM ball with the lead and 3.30 left on the clock. But West Bell's defense forces the Mules into another field goal attempt, and for the first time all night, Greco misses. This one from 42 yards out, and one more chance for the Griffins. Windmiller to Clark for 15. Windmiller to Lewis for 11. But all for naught as the Griffins' last chance with a minute to go, the pass falls incomplete. And Central Missouri defeats Missouri Western for just the second time in the last 13 meetings. And joining us now to reflect on the loss last week at Central Missouri, Griffin football head coach Jerry Partridge. Coach, you said it yourself right after the game. You couldn't beat yourself. That may have been exactly what happened Thursday night. Well, I feel that's what happened. I don't want to take anything away from Central Missouri, though. I always get mad when people do that when we win. But... Uh, they deserve to win. They made fewer mistakes. Um, they didn't turn the ball over at all. Uh, tried to throw a few interceptions. We didn't take them. Uh, but they never put the ball on the ground at all. Uh, we lost a turnover war. They weren't as penalized as us. Uh, they made four field goals. We made one. I mean, they, just, they did enough to win a football game. You know, we outgained them, but yet that's not how you keep score. So very frustrated with the loss, but uh, it's over. Can't do anything about it now other than try to correct those mistakes and move on to the next week. Well, it was game one. It's the first game video film that you have of the year. Talk about some things you liked and some things that, that you probably didn't like. 
Well, on the offensive side of the ball, I think Brandon Clark played really well. Um, I think there was good play out of Travis Anderson, left guard, who's an all-conference performer. That Scott Whitmiller threw the ball well, um, can execute better in the running game a little bit. Uh, running game-wise, was disappointing. We only rushed for 37 yards, and there's things probably uh, that can be done differently to make us better in that category. Defensively, I thought we played a really good football for about three quarters. Had some big coverage busts at big moments that resulted in some major yards and didn't like how he collapsed in the fourth quarter there a little bit. So that's frustrating. I thought our, our young kicker looks like he's got talent. Uh, we won the net punt game. We won the net kickoff game. I thought we covered kicks well. We returned kicks well. Um, you know, that, those are things that we build on. I think Central Missouri's got a good football team, and we're going to play another one in Central Oklahoma Saturday, so we've got to get back and go quickly. One of the big kind of question marks, if there were any coming in, you, you alluded special teams. Those guys look pretty good. Your safeties look really, really good too. You got good play really out of the newcomers. So it's really just cleaning a few things up, right? Well, we felt like our safeties were kind of the stars of the defensive side. I mean, right. I think both Dante Watkins and Jonathan Owens played well. Uh, Dante got a penalty he'd like to have back, but uh, those guys played well. Um, I think our, both our inside backers did some good things, were solid. Uh, Dale and Harper on the front D-line played really well too and showed up pretty big. So. Um, you know, we felt good about that. We, we played well defensively. I mean, that's 300 yards against an offense probably will end up averaging 400 yards a game. Talk about your quarterback, Skyler Winmiller, his first career 300-yard passing game. Did some good things in the passing game. Did throw a couple interceptions. Maybe one of those wasn't his fault. Your thoughts on his well, one of the, one of his One of those wasn't his fault, you know, and, and you're going to lose inside linebackers sometimes. So I don't really, the interception parts I don't get too upset with, but you can't have a ball clank off the pads. Your receivers got to stick their hands out and catch it, and that was in the red zone. Um, I think there's things he could have done differently in the run game to help us. Uh, but for overall, I thought he played pretty well throwing the football. You talked last week with us about a big group of wide receivers that maybe some of them unknowns. We know a couple of them at least played really well. One of those guys, D. Tolliver, probably not going to have him this week because of an injury. But just talk about what you saw out of that group of receivers. Well, again, I said Brandon Clark played well. Um, D. Tolliver um, played really, really well. Uh, felt really good about D and his leadership he's showing. Uh, has an AC joint strain. Uh, will be out probably this Saturday. He's telling people he's going to play, but I don't know that's possible. We should have him in, in telequal next weekend. Um, uh, you know, receiving core, though, there's some things those guys can do better. I think you're going to see the best stuff out of them later on. Juwan Johnson had a nice game, too, but he's hurt a knee in practice yesterday, so I don't know where we're going to have him. So, um, overall, you know, tight end-wise, Furbit uh, caught the ball. Did some nice catches Alec did, but I think Alec can play better, too. That's a look back at Central Missouri. We will move on to the home opener this Saturday against Central Oklahoma when Griffin Sports Insider returns. First, here's Bo. Well, another Tony Award winning episode of Beatboxing with Bo. But Bo, you're sitting in an empty parking lot. What the heck are you doing? Oh my goodness, he's mad this week. But you know, Bo, you realize it's only Monday of game week. The game is on Saturday. Are you tailgating already? thought I'd get an early start on the weekend. No, that's all right. We like that. We like people to come out and tailgate early. Maybe not seven days early, but we can live with that. Bo, let's get down to some important things. Uh, you have seldom been wrong on beatboxing with Rose. Bo, you were wrong last week. What happened? I don't know what happened. I listened to my buddy Dean Moss last week. That might be one of the problems. Bo, trust your intuition. Well, it was just one game. Ten games to go on the season. You study the tape. You stay up late at night. Home opener, Craig Field, Spratt Memorial Stadium. First time on Craig Field. Bo, we need a prediction. Griffins, Broncos, this was another prediction I think you were wrong on last year. Break it down for us. How's it going to go this week? There's no way the Griffins lose two in a row. I talked to my good friend and buddy, Jerry Partridge, and he assured me that the Griffins would ride the Broncos all the way to Oklahoma and back. He's not even giving a prediction vote. Do you have a score you'd like to throw out there? I mean, Jerry Partridge said. Griffins roll 75 to 3. 75 to 3. Well, that's kind of a nice round number. Of course, Missouri Western, 100 years old this year. Not quite 75, but that's all right. Bo, you've studied the tape. Why that score? Not mincing words. We're going to dole out total pain. <laughs> Well, uh, you said it last week, Bo's 
never wrong, but sometimes he's, he's not always right. Really far from being right. Last week, not so much. Let's hope. I would expect nothing less from Bo. That's kind of right what you've week. grown to expect from Bo, isn't it? Yeah, he's he's outrageous. It, it, he's, it, a it he's a celebrity. He's a celebrity. It happens. Coach, this week, Central Oklahoma. You talked about it at the luncheon a little bit. Really, between your game in Edmond last year, a loss where you had the lead in the fourth quarter. You watch that game. You watch your game last week against Central Missouri. Your team's going to be pretty well prepared for this game because they've essentially seen the same game twice going into this one. Well, it, it's, you got to you got to uh, correct things. Though. You got to finish things. Different. We didn't finish either football game, both situations, uh, Central Oklahoma game last year, and then, then last Thursday against Central Missouri. We had opportunities to stretch the lead out to more than one score, and I think it becomes a different game in both categories. In um, didn't do it and left them in there, and, and really did not play very good defense in the fourth quarter in either case. So. A great defensive effort, especially in the third quarter in both those games. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I only would give up a first down either one of those quarters. And uh, to all of a sudden give up some big plays and chunks in the fourth was very frustrating, especially to give scores late to win the games. And then offensively, we left points out there. We didn't finish drives. Should have had more points in both cases, both games. The Broncos are a team coach that they have a mobile quarterback. Uh, they now have some confidence under their belt that they can win in this league, even though they didn't win last last week. And whereas last year they snuck, maybe snuck up on some teams, that's not going to be the case this year with Central Oklahoma, is it? Well, no, we're ready for them. I think mean, they, they played really good defense last uh, year against us. They're, they got those inside two guys. The D tackles are as good as a pair as we're going to face all year long. They're very physical and strong. Linebackers are physical. I think their secondary, secondary tackles well. Like you said, the quarterback is very mobile. Um, that's going to be the key. They can contain him and not let him run wild on us. Our tailback, who had a great year last year towards ACL, we've heard uh, week one. Um, they have some good receivers, got some linemen that are pretty physical. So it's going to be a challenge, and they're going to be angry. They're up 20 to they got they, they outgained their opponent by over 100 yards Saturday and lost. They, their turnovers were the name of the game. At one point, they were up 20 to nothing and had fumbled twice inside the five yard line. So they should have been up, whatever, 27 nothing at the very least, and maybe even 35 nothing. These are two teams now, week two of the season, both picked pretty high, both with postseason aspirations that are 0 and 1. Either one of you comes out of this game 0-2. The outlook's starting to look a little bit more bleak. Is this about as big of a game in week two as, as you've had recently? Uh, every year it is because we just you, you, you don't get tournaments at the end. you got to win. And so I mean, in 2011, we lost to Pittsburgh first game. We had to play Central Missouri. So every year it's this way. And, and honestly, the coaches predict, predicted us to, to lose both these games anyway. We're supposed to be 0-2. So um, you know, we come out 1-1, we're ahead of the game. It's also the first opportunity this year to play at home, but a lot of different things about home this year. A new surface, Craig Field, now it's Pratt Memorial Stadium, and a lot of renovation out there over the summer. Obviously, still a ways to go, but just, just talk about the home opener and just some of the new digs out there. Yeah, we're excited. I mean, it's, you know, it's going to be different to have a game when it feels that close to, you know, to the stands, but uh, the crowd will be more of a crowd noise factor. I think probably there's times when I've been able to yell and get people's attention. I don't know if I'll be able to get that done as much. Um, you know, I, I know we're getting ready to do some extra construction there in the stadium because they locked down that little gate, that little bicycle rack thing, so coaches can't go down the stairs of the field, so I'm going to have to go all the way around to the hill but, uh, for practice. But I, yeah, we're looking forward to it. I, it's, I, I, it's like I told Matt Trent, and I said, you know, this is Spratt Stadium is, is, you know, a lot of my lining in my life. You know, sure. and it's, it's uh, been a lot of special moments out there. And, um, you know, it, you know when, it, whenever, when it's all said and done, it's going to be a great memory for to all those games we've coached there and, and, and been able to compete. And uh, anytime you get an opportunity to win a football game there, it's, it's just a great thing. Maybe a wrinkle to the uniform this week too, correct? Yeah, yeah we're going to wear the gold helmets. helmets. Excellent. And, and gold, gold helmets will be popped, popped out. out and then probably the gold and the black jersey and the gold pants. We'll try to keep as little black on as possible because it's uh, attracts the heat. Painted gold day as well. That's fitting. Oh, yeah, it's fitting. Centennial year, a little bit of a throwback with the gold helmets. I like it. Let's throw back and get a win over Central Oklahoma. Absolutely. You have Absolutely. so many of them early on. You know, the other so. thing that's very fitting about the end of this oh, segment, yeah. we deprived How people of this forget? last week. We had some technical difficulties. So it is time for Easley's Impromptu. We're going to ask Coach P three questions, tantalizing trio. Uh, this week, by the way, we're featuring a great Reuben sandwich. We're here on location at the Hi-Ho Barn and Grill. The special is the Reuben Island, sandwich. If you're crowd. looking for a good one, the special is the Reuben sandwich. You like Reuben sandwiches, don't you, Coach no, P? No, I do not like Reuben sandwiches. He Ruben hates sandwich. them. Well, I love them. I'm, I'm with you. So, Coach P, here's how this works to remind folks, because they didn't get it last last week, and then since they haven't had it with you since since 2014. I'm going to ask you three questions that may relate to football, they may not. You're going to give me the first thing Probably that's on your mind. Not, okay. okay. Number one, because I know you have an opinion on this, what in the heck is wrong with Royals ace Johnny Cueto? He's got to get the ball down. I'm not sure how he's going to get the ball down, but he's got to get it down. Everything's elevated. Do you think he's injured? 
No, he's not injured. He's not injured. Okay, I think he needs to get hurt. the ball down as well. They're always hurt. Right? Secondly, guess what? As we tape this show, and even as people watch this show, it's the first week of the NFL season. As is tradition on GSI, I need a Chiefs win prediction from Jerry Partridge. Uh, I'll, I'll give him 10. 10 wins. I like that. Yeah. That'd probably get him in the I'm NFL playoffs. I'm writing it down. With and finally, here we go. and Ten. boy, I hate to jinx this. I hate to ask this question. But in watching college He's football, going to anyway. in watching college football last weekend, uh, most folks that saw Nebraska BYU saw a Hail Mary play at the end of the game. BYU catches an inch. Nebraska's 29 game season opening winning streak. You ever been beaten or been on the winning side of a Hail Mary in your career, coaching or playing? I've uh, been beaten by uh, Central Missouri a couple, couple losses ago. Uh, to them, you know, there hadn't been too many losses in Central Missouri, but in 1999, we got a tie game. They're like the 75, yard, 25 yard line, and we're just trying to get out. You know, almost getting ready to go to the to overtime, and, and not really even a hail mary. They just throw one over top of corner and score from 75 yards out with three seconds mm -hmm. left. Really tip, but what a hail mary itself. Uh, we've caught some hail marys, but I don't think we've ever given one up like that. That's very difficult. And honestly, the kid that's got him wrapped up just falls, doesn't pull him into the end zone. They, they stop at the yeah. foot line, and Brigham Young is heartbroken. Hmm. Well, I tell you what. Let's hope it doesn't come down to a Hail Mary this weekend. Let's no. have a good home opener. All right, sounds good. Get a victory. Nice memories. Yep. Good luck, Coach. Yep. Thanks. Well, 1 p.m. kick at the brand-new Craig Field at Spratt Memorial Stadium. Paint it gold day. Brett, remind the fans what to expect when they arrive, hopefully a little early Saturday. Well, when they arrive, obviously, some new logistics at Craig Field at Spratt Memorial Stadium. There will be three entrances. We remind fans that our main entrance will be what we refer to as the Baker Fitness Center entrance. The student entrance, now essentially that will be where you buy tickets. You pick up your will call. Uh, tickets, you pick up max experience tickets, will, uh, credentials, etc. That'll be our main entrance. We will also have two other entrances for ticketed fans, one being up by the Griffin Indoor Sports Complex, the other being in the northwest side of the stadium where our Stadium Club Hospitality tent will be. You may enter the stadium there with tickets, but you cannot buy tickets at those other two locations. So fans will need to be aware of that and also allow yourself plenty of time to get into the stadium. Stadium gates open one hour prior. Love to have you in your seats 20 minutes before kickoff to, to be a part of the pregame activities. Welcome the Griffins to Craig Field for the first time this year and uh, enjoy a great day of college football on campus. It will be. GSI will be right back. I'm PGA golfer Bryce Garnett. Grant Fink, Cleveland Indians organization, and I'm a Griffin. Mike Schultz, St. Louis Cardinals organization, and I'm a Griffin. Greg Zerline, kicker, St. Louis Rams, and I am a Griffin. Michael Hill, NFL running back, I am a Griffin. David Bass, Chicago Bears, defensive end, and I am a Griffin. Well, Craig Field at Spratt Memorial Stadium saw action over Labor Day. The Griffin soccer team actually debuted. And let's hope that record of success keeps up for both Griffin soccer and football. A perfect two in a weekend to start the season. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't ask for a better start for Craig Field, for Coach Edwards' squad. As Brett mentioned, 2-0 and over the weekend in the MIAA GAC Challenge with wins over East Central and Harding. Coach Edwards said his team may not have played their best, but they still found a way to pick up two wins. Griffin Soccer hosting the MIAA GAC Challenge. Action kicked off Friday with Emporia State defeating Harding. That afternoon, the Griffs make their debut on Craig Field to a sun-drenched crowd, and they don't disappoint. Missouri Western set a program record with six goals against East Central last year. Not the same team, but don't tell Nikki Burr that. 39th minute, the senior fires it into the top right corner, and the Griffs are up 1-0 which would have been almost enough. Sarah Lyle blinks the Tigers until the 86th minute, but a scary moment here as Lyle goes down after giving up the goal. She'd get up, play the final four minutes, and her team would walk away 3-1 winners. For just the second time in program history, the team starts the season 1-0. Chad Edwards was, well, he's always giddy. You know, you never know what to expect the first game, and I thought all the players really came with a great attitude tonight and played with awesome effort, and we executed really, really well possession-wise. And we, you know, we got to score. You know, we had a lot of opportunities. We got to score a few more goals, but put three in the back of the net on your first night out is a heck of an accomplishment, and I'm just really, really proud of the way we competed for 90 minutes tonight. I hate giving up that goal in the last few minutes, but outside of that, we really controlled the game, and that's what I'm most proud of. It's always fun to start, you know, just to get that first win out of your belt and, you know, get the jitters out, and now it's time to really get after Harding on Sunday. 
get after Harding, they would. After falling behind 1-0 in the first, Cassidy Chapel finds Bridget Blessy, who pulls some matrix moves on the Harding goalie to tie the game at one. Head coach Chad Edwards should be happy about it, but soccer's a funny game, and when you're not happy, they show you one of these, and you have to sit down and be quiet, or something like that. Blessy wasn't quiet, though. She takes this feed from Lane Shepard and puts the Harding goalie on the ground again, and the ball on the back of the net. Again, it was her second goal of the game, matching her season total from 2014. Griffs win 2-1 and move to 2-0 for the second straight year and the second time in school history. We're like a bunch of sharks that smell a little blood and we get a taste of what it's like to get ahead. There's no stopping us. Like We are at it. Uh, our defense is incredible. Our midfield is possessing unreal. And our forwards, we're just finding a way to finish. Griffin Soccer hits the road this weekend with a trip to Minnesota. They'll play at Bemidji State on Friday and Minnesota Crookston on Sunday. Well, Griffin Volleyball banking on some frequent flyer miles in their non-conference schedule. A trip up north last weekend. The team gets ready to head out west this weekend. An interesting, nice mix of newcomers and returners back from a year ago. And Griffin Volleyball went 2-2 two and two in the opening weekend at the Ferris State Invitational. After falling in two hard-fought matches on day one, the Griffins came back with two impressive three-set victories on day two. Voice of the Griffins, Dave Rigert, caught up with head coach Marion Carbon about the weekend that was and the weekend that comes up. I'm Dave Rigger with Marion Carbon, the head volleyball coach at Missouri Western. After a 2-2 two two weekend this past weekend, and I'm guessing you would have liked to have a little bit better record, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we'd feel a lot better about things if we had gone 3-1. and one. Um, But it is what it is. We came out against Saginaw Friday morning and just um, didn't execute late in the match. Um, we had chances in the fourth set to end it. Um, and had a couple costly errors, you know, by players that wouldn't normally make them. We had our libero, you know, just go to set a ball over the net and sets it into the net instead of over. And so that finished the fourth and then the fifth set, we were ahead 8-6 at the, at the uh, side switch and um, let them go on a 9-2 to run to end the match. And so um, that was just really unfortunate. And I think it's a win that down the road we're going to really look back on and wish we had back. Um, but I also think that this team has a lot of potential, and we showed that this weekend too. Um, against Mercyhurst on Saturday, we played really well. There was one set where we our side-out percentage was 100%. We never let them score on their serve. And so it's, it's moments like that from this weekend that we're going to take um, the positives from and really go and build on that and um, and hopefully come out more than two and two this weekend. You guys are a very young team. You saw a lot of young players play this weekend. Were you happy with how they played for the most part in their first action? Yeah, we were. I think, um, you know, we started and played three true freshmen and they um, pretty much played all four matches uh, and had really good performances in, in some matches and then some some freshman moments um, where you know they they couldn't execute, couldn't find kills, and just didn't have the experience to to figure out you know more creative ways to get kills and to score points for us. And so that will come with time. Um, it will also come with confidence. You know, in, in some of those moments we had yet to get a win. And so when you, you know your team's desperate for a win and you're a freshman in a big moment, it's it's harder to find those kills than it is when your team's you know on a winning streak. And so now we're on a two game winning streak and that's how we're going to look at it. And uh, we're hoping to just win all the way uh, back to St. Joe. So to Colorado and back. Were you impressed by how your kids did respond from the two losses and bounce back and win the next two games? Because again, a young team, you're still working on chemistry, things like that it could be kind of a fragile thing, but they bounced back pretty well. Yeah, we did. I think it it went well because number one, we have a, a lot of returners. I mean, we, we have some new players and some youth, but we also have experienced returners. Jesse Thorpe, Jordan Shohan showed just a lot of maturity in the way that they handled things and the way the attitude they came back with on Saturday. Um, you know, and we sat down with them Friday night and just asked them to, you know, have patience with these younger players and continue to encourage more than you, you know, um, kind of prod along or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so the, the two of them and, and the performance we got out of Lindsey Partridge on Saturday really helped kind of settle us down and, and settle some of the younger players' nerves. And um, you know, our juniors and seniors carried more of the load on on Saturday, which helped our younger players just kind of fit into their role as younger players that, in moments, can play really great and, and can carry us, but don't feel like they have the responsibility to carry us all the time. And now, talk about this weekend. How do you extend the two-game winning streak now? 
I think we just need to, number one, control our defense, con control the things that we're good at. So defensively, we're very strong. We proved that last weekend. We're going to um, get a lot of attacks. And so our hitters just need to be smart in terms of um, keeping the ball in play when the opportunity is not there and then capitalizing on opportunities when we're one-on-one, -on -one, maybe with a block where Jordan has pulled a block. Um, take those opportunities to really go and hammer and get the kills. Um, and in other opportunities when we're out of system or have two big blockers in our face, find a way to, to make a smart shot and most importantly to keep the ball in play. And will this be a challenge this weekend? Are they all winnable games for you guys? I think they're definitely four winnable games. Um, I think most of the teams, I think all but one of the teams we play was above 500 on weekend one. And so um, I think we'll, we'll see some, ch some challenges. Um, there will be some good players, um, Tarleton. Played some good teams in weekend one, and I think they're three and one or four and zero. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to have to play our best. But I think, like I said, I think if we can do the things we do well, um, and do them well this weekend, like our defense um, and our serve receive, we'll, we have a good shot to go four and zero. Oh. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thanks, Dave. Marion Carbon, the Griffin volleyball coach. They are two and two right now as they're back on the road this weekend. I'm Dave Rigger for GSI. I'm back to you guys. Griffin Volleyball, as we mentioned, with another long road trip this weekend. They'll be at the Steel and Silver Classic in Colorado Springs, Colorado. They'll play four matches total, two Friday and then two on Saturday to wrap up the tournament. Griffin Sports Insider is presented by Mosaic Life Care. It's more than health care, it's life care. Every concussion is different. A lot of times people get headaches right off the bat. Um, but sometimes that's not always true. That doesn't always happen right off the bat. Dizziness, uh, maybe some ringing in the ears. Um, you're going to look for blank stares. Uh, they may not be able to tell you where they're at, what they've had for breakfast. They may not be able to tell you what they're doing. I could feel it, you know, and I was just, it was just off. I, there was something about it that I, I had no control over. Hearing doors shut and everything would make your head just pound and lights would just be crazy. Like, just little things that you take for granted you just can't do. But it's important to remember that some symptoms may not develop until two or three days down the road. So just because you don't have symptoms right after the event doesn't mean that you don't have a concussion. If in doubt, get checked out. In summary, concussion symptoms are varied and can be grouped into four categories. Physical symptoms, including headache, dizziness, and nausea. Cognitive symptoms, including problems with memory, attention, and feeling slowed down. Emotional symptoms such as sadness, irritability, and feeling nervous. And finally, problems with sleeping. Well, welcome back to GSI presented by Mosaic Life Care. That part two in a series on concussions in the Mosaic Life Minute Break. Uh, that's correct. And again, Concussions, very, very serious part of, of any sport. They Football are. seems like especially, but uh, always good to know prevention and how to get yourself back in the game after you suffer one of those situations. Yeah, great time of year for us to be showing those. Youth sports especially, for very sure. active this time of year, high school sports, all of it. Those are great features very serious uh, issues. to be paying attention to. Well, a big, big, big time week this week for Griffin Athletics. Just one team at home, but that's Griffin Football in their 2015 debut. Field. Well, the start of the, the home season is always festive, especially for the football season, and always a lot of events that surround that. We've got our Booster Club barbecue this week. And then on Friday, an event we're really excited about, kind of a Best. tradition we started three years ago. This is our third annual United Way Painted Gold Friday. Uh, the, the start of the season kind of falls at a good time, right in the conjunction with the local United Way campaign. So we've teamed up with, with the good folks at the United Way. We're going to have about 50 or 55 volunteers throughout St. Joseph at five different locations. We'll be at hy -Vee, we'll be at Apple Market locations in St. Joseph and Savannah. And then we'll be at the city intersections here in St. Joseph, 22, 22nd and Garfield, Noise and Mitchell. And we'll have volunteers there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. accepting donations for the uh, local United Way campaign. And anybody making a donation will get the uh, commemorative Painted Gold Friday newspaper, compliments of the St. Joseph News Press. That newspaper's got season previews about all three of our fall sports. A little bit about the Spratt Stadium renovation. Got some good pictures in there, a little bit about, about the timeline, and also some really Really good stuff about the United Way campaign and how you can get involved with that. Again, that's this Friday, September 11th, basically 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at those locations listed. Take part in the United Way uh, Paint It Gold Friday and kind of get yourself ready for home football weekend at the Pratt Stadium. Yeah, win-win for everybody. Absolutely. You get to support a great local organization and get caught up and get fired up 
for Griffin Athletics this season. Well, that's going to do it for this week of GSI. We'll be back hopefully on location somewhere else or right back here next Hawaii week. next week, right? Hawaii, that's yeah. What I thought. As long yes. as I can wear a Hawaiian shirt, we'll let lay, you. hula skirt, we'll all let that you. good stuff. So we'll see you next week. Painted as Gold always. Friday. Wear your gold Saturday. And as always, go, go Grips. Grips.